Hi everyone, so we're starting a brand new unit here. So we are going to be talking about stars specifically, the life and death of stars, and what stellar evolution means here. So as we usually start, some questions to think about. So how do stars form? Are there still stars forming today? Do more massive stars shine longer? Will the sun someday stop shining? And if so, how? Where do heavy elements on the Earth come from? And what is a pulsar? So some things that we will be talking about are um, different transformation from older stars to giants or supergiants. Um, the recycling process of dying stars um, used and seen in other galaxies. What happens when stars run out of fuel? How ele heavy elements are created? What happens at the end of stellar evolution? What, uh, why are some stars go out relatively gently while others end with a bang? And the incredible densities of neutron stars and how they are observed here. So first thing we should start with is star formation. So star form from a mutual gravitational attraction. And this is, happens between gases and dusts that are inside giant molecular clouds. So if you see in this image right now, we can see this huge cloud here. And so when we have that gravitational attraction of all these different gases and dusts in here in that cloud, we're going to get that formation of a star. So this diagram is called an HR diagram. This is going to be a really important one. Um, but first, I just wanted to define a few things that you see on here. So a main sequence is something that we are going to be talking about. So a main sequence star. Um, and that is going to be found right on this red line that comes down through this graph. So a main sequence is a star that is fusing hydrogen and helium in its core. And the star is not expanding or contracting. So this is a star that... Um, our sun and at the moment is a main sequence star right now. So we can see that right here on this line. And it's going to be important to reference because when we talk about this graph, um, things that are above or below the main sequence line, um, there's something else that's going on with that star. So we need to find out what that is and be able to determine it using this graph. Um, so you can see here our graph is based on luminosity or absolute magnification. So you can see these terms here. And then also spectral type. So those are different things that we're going to define um, with here. And we can also see temperature up here. So if we're talking about our sun, it is 10 to the 6 years or 100 million years old. And we can see that these um, mean sequence lifetimes have that weird curve to it that we saw. So we can see different temperatures here. Our sun is right in the middle at 1. I'm just going to underline all of its information here. So what if our sun were 1.5 times bigger than it is? And what if the sun were 3 times bigger? So we're going to talk about how that would change its look. So first thing is stellar evolution. That is going to be the evolution of the star depending on its mass. So we're going to look at um, three sizes of stars. So stars like our sun, so that main sequence, big stars, and then huge stars. So big stars are um, 8 to 25 times the, sun, uh, the mass of the sun's mass, and huge stars is 25 times the sun's mass. So stars like our sun equal about one and will turn into a planetary nebulae and a white dwarf star, and then they're going to end up as black dwarfs that actually give off no light, where big stars will end up as neutron stars, and then huge stars will actually end up as black holes, and we'll talk about that as well. So if we're taking a look at um, stellar evolution here with our graph, we have our main star sequences. So again, with the HR graph right there. As time moves forward, we can see that 
um, our main sequence stars have kind of two tracks that it takes. So we have giants that will eventually end up um, going to helium flash, a GB stars, a planetary nebulae, and white dwarfs. So this is the um, evolution here. Or we can go to supergiants, which lead to supernovas, which can either lead to black holes or neutron stars in this scenario. So evolution of these stars really depend on their masses here. So stars like our moon, our sequence here is going to be our main sequence to a red giant, to a red supergiant, our planetary nebula and white dwarf, and then finally to a black dwarf here. So our sun burns hydrogen now. So that's going to be an important gas. Um, but in about 5 billion years, it'll be almost out of hydrogen and turn into a red giant. So if we can see the difference here is that our main sequence star, we have a hydrogen fusing core, where in our young red giant here, we have a hydrogen fusing shell, but our helium core is no longer having those thermonuclear reactions here. Okay, and we can see in all three of these, our red giant completely actually has a helium fusing core. So that's where our Earth will eventually make it to. So our sun today versus a red giant. So if we take a look at this, this little star here, which is the center of our solar system, is that in a comparison as the sun as a red giant. So this is our sun right now. It's very small in comparison. Um, we can see it's only one over a hundred um, anatomical units, where here our sun as a red giant is equivalent to one astronomical unit. So this is a huge difference in size um, in that comparison as a red giant. So red giant stars come, you'll see them in some clusters here, a few of them are much larger than others. So right here we have a much larger red giant than others. Um, so as they form here, remember that we're switching from a hydrogen fusing core to a helium fusing core. So if we're taking a look at some life history of stars like ours, remember this is our H, um, HR diagram. So we can see that we've traveled off of our main sequence line into a um, more massive area. So this is what where our mass is happening. So we're moving to our red giant branch, would be, which would be found over here. Moving down to where we would have our helium fusing core. We're still in red giant here. And then we would move back out from our super red, uh, red super giant to our planet um, nebula here. So remember, for life history of our sun. We start here as a main sequence. We'll move to a red giant, which is going to be um, a helium fusing core into a planet nebula or in our white dwarf. So taking a look at our sun, when we become a red super giant, Near the end of our life here, um, our sun's life, it will become that supergiant. So if we look here, we have a carbon oxygen core, hydrogen fusing shell, and a helium fusing shell. So if you've noticed something from a little bit of chemistry that you know, our core here is getting heavier and heavier. So hydrogen is our lightest element. Helium is our second lightest, but then carbon and oxygen are getting to be heavier and heavier elements here because of the atoms that are fusing together to make these larger um, elements here. So going from supergiant to white dwarf, the sun will actually pull off our outer layers. So remember our outer layers was that hydrogen fusing shell and our helium fusing shell. And that's gonna form that planetary nebula. And the remaining core material 
will become the white dwarf star. So that's going to be important. Again, looking at here, we have our main sequence line. Remember, we moved up here, and our track has brought us down to white dwarf territory over here. So the outer layers form our planetary nebula, and our core of the sun is going to form that white dwarf sun. So this is something that it might look like here. Um, so we can see our hydrogen shells here, our helium shell, and then our white dwarf star is going to be on the center there. We can see more, more shells here from our planetary nebulae, as you can see. And then, remember, our white dwarf is that core. So we can actually see Sirius B is a white dwarf. And if you've ever heard of the star Sirius, it shines a lot brighter than Sirius B, but we use it as a um, telling point to where that other star is. So these are just some cool things to talk about, but talking about the sun's evolution, remember we start at main sequence, we move to a red giant, move to a red supergiant, and then into our planetary nebulae and white dwarf phase here. Okay, remember if you have any questions, make sure you ask.